Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2021 Bowman Chrome Baseball Hobby Edition. 12 box, pick your team, number 7. Kick back and relax, this is close to an hour long break. All cards ship. There's the case and big thanks to all of these wonderful people here for getting in on the action. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for spending a bit of your Thursday with me. Taylor ended up getting last spot mojo with the White Sox before we pulled out the teams for fillers. If you have a little uh, rooftop niche name, Taylor also won a team in that filler. Thanks, everyone, for making this happen. I appreciate it. And there's the full 12-box case right here. All card ship. So you can see 4, 8, 12 right there. And away we go. Ed saying, oh, this is Dodgers attempt two out of four for you? All right. Time for a little Dodger Joe mojo, Ed, to close out the night. Dodgers got a little mojo today. They won an extra innings game. Got out of Colorado. And the Giants lost an extra innings game in San Diego. So, what is this? This is also lucky number seven. This is hobby number seven. So maybe a little little magic here. Who knows? And we'll do an autograph recap at the end as well. So if you're watching the replay of this and you're like, I don't want to sit here for 40, 50 minutes watching this. Yeah, you can either watch it at double speed. That's a pro tip. You can watch a double speed. Or you can just kind of fast forward to the hits. There's only two autographs a box. We'll be able to spot those pretty quickly. Um, or just drag the slider all the way to the end for the recap. All right, so good luck, everybody. Tristan Houses for the Red Sox. That's going to be for Alfred. And our first autograph is going to be Trent DeVoe. 64 out of 100 Atomic Refractor Autograph. Burke Thomas with the Halos. Go, number 16, Angels Prospect. Jazz Chisholm, blue, 81 out of 150 for the fish. That's going to go to Joe. Ed's not greedy with the Dodgers. All he wants is a Wilman Orange auto. And we'll call it even. <laughs> call it a night. We've got a Jordan Alvarez, uh, yellow. 13 out of 75. That's for the Strohs. That's for Chris Maxwell. Got randomized the Astros here in hobby number seven. Where's our second autograph? There it is. Tyler Keenan. Tyler Keenan for the M's. I Coppola with the Mariners here in hobby number seven. And I think this is, there it is, the case hit already. Bowman Ascensions, one per case. Nick Gonzalez, shortstop, Pirates, Brian Croft, Buckos. Although I did see a hobby case with two of these. I think one of them was just the base one, and one of them was actually numbered to like 25. So could be a chance at another one. Box one in the books. Next box. We were talking um, just in between breaks and, and in the other HTA choice break that we were doing. We were talking about um, free agency. 
right, for teams that may or may not make the playoffs. So according to MLBTradeRumors.com, updated early September, September 7th, 2021. Players on track to reach free agency after the 2021 season. Let's see some let's see if there's some interesting names. Catchers. Buster Posey's a free agent? Oh no, he has a there's a club option. They're gonna pick up the club option. Right? Twenty two million? They're not letting Buster Posey walk. Not with a three million dollar buyout, not with the season he had. No, he's he's finishing his career as as a giant. Now these, these are all kind of older catchers. Alex Avila, Tucker Barnhart has a club option. Robinson Chirinos, Jan Gomes, Sandy Leone. You know, except for Buster Posey. Kurt Suzuki might hang it up after this year. He's 38. Um, first baseman. Anthony Rizzo is a big name out here. Brandon Belt's a free agent. CJ Crone, Todd Fre Freddie Freeman's a free agent. Interesting. Braves are going to re-sign him, right? No way they're letting Freddie Freeman walk. But Freeman and Rizzo look like your two free agent sort of uh, free agent. I, I dropped the link to this list in the chat, so you can look take a look at it there. Those are your first phase. And who's my favorite announcer? Yeah, Vince Scully, for sure. I think the, the way Vince Scully creates space in between plays, I think he just lets the crowd sometimes do some work. I think that's one of his best qualities. Um, I'm not familiar with the Mets broadcasting team, Ed, but the, the Giants broadcasting team is pretty good with uh, John Miller and whoever the color commentator is. But but yeah, John Miller doing Giants games is, is pretty good. He's got a great voice. There's Luis Camposano. Uh, 159 out of 250. That's for the Padres. That's going to be for Ryan. Joe, jazz is why you went into what? You're welcome. <laughs> Brian Ramos, 434 out of 499 for the White Sox. Taylor, last spot mojo, strikes again. Anthony, well, I'm assuming Anthony's a Cubs fan. He's saying he's going to pray the Cubs re-sign Rizzo. But you're going to give it a 0.01% chance. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. Number 13 prospect right here, Taylor. Last spot mojo strikes again. From Taylor to Taylor Trammell for the Mariners to 499, Refractor, Coppola. Oh, the Jazz Chisholm. I don't know. I just black out when I break, Ed. I'm just, I'm just in a zone. And then, and then after I'm done, I was like, what happened? What did I pull? There's Luis Tori, uh, Tori Bio. Purple Shimmer to 250 for the Gigantes. That goes to Big Boys 007. And behind Tatis Jr. is a redemption. There's Riley Green for the Tigers to 150. All right. Bowman Chrome Prospect. Autograph. M. Minnesota. Yeah, it's Mysel Urbina. He's been the, the one kind of constant redemption out of here. Pat Wolf, there you go. One of the bigger names in this product. Team Wolf. All right, next box. Uh, so, uh, so first baseman, I think the names that jump out to me, Freddie Freeman, although he's probably going to re-sign with, with the Braves. Anthony Rizzo. I'll bet the Yankees will re-sign him. I think they like what's happening there. Oh, no worries, Joe. Right into the PC. I love it. Second baseman. What names jump, what free agent names jump out at me? 
Starlin Cast, Marwin Gonzalez, maybe. No, there's really not a lot of Jonathan Villar, perhaps. Nothing too big there. Yeah, Javier Baez among shortstop free agents is a big name. A lot of, I mean, 29 year old Javier Baez, 27 year old Carlos Correa, 28 year old Corey Seager, 29 year old Trevor Story. That's a big shortstop market this year. Is your team in for a shortstop? Who do you want? Yeah, I could see the Cubs trying to get Baez back, but but I don't. I mean, I feel like there's a lot of teams that'll that that'll open the that'll open the checkbook for Javier Baez. Maybe not the Mets. Probably not the Mets, but I mean, if the Astros lose Carlos Correa, you don't think they could they want to slot in a Javier Baez type player right in there? It's possible. But a lot of shortstops. Who wants shortstops? Javier Baez, Carlos Correa, you know, Corey Seager, Trevor Story. There's Austin Wells for the Yankees. Magenta Shimmer to 199. Or Fuchsia? I don't know. I actually don't know what this is called. Junior with the Yankees. Still nice. There's Aldo Ramirez, Red Sox, Alfred with Boston. You, Hollywood saying Baez goes to the Diamondbacks? Oh, the Diamondbacks take Javier Baez. It's Josh Donaldson, 250. Josh Donaldson, twins, that'll be for Wolf. Pedro Pineda, Sparkle, Speckle, Autograph, 152 out of 299. Carlos Correa, I guess, could stay with the Astros. Could he go to the Yankees as well? Rizzo, Carlos Correa with the Yankees, Corey Seager with the Yankees, perhaps. In a previous break, we were talking about Corey Seager possibly to Seattle. That could be interesting. And there's Miguel Amaya to 499. There's George Feliz for the Mariners, I Coppola. And we got a hell. Uh, Helcris Olivares, 80 out of 250. I like the color match there, purple chrome. And that's going to be for the Rocks. Purple Mountains Majesty, Drew, with the Rockies. So there's your shortstop market. What about third base? Yeah, Chris Bryant. Although I feel like Chris Bryant could... Uh, Chris Brown probably will re-sign with the, with the Giants. I think that's a good fit there. Um, I guess Nolan Arenado could opt out of his remaining five years after, the, after this season. Opt out of his remaining five years, $164 million, although I don't think he's going to do that. If he had like an MVP-style season, I could see him maybe doing that, but I don't think he will. Um, who else? Kel Franco is a free agent. Marlon Gonzalez can play third. Brad Miller, Kyle Seeger has a club option. $15 million club option, which I don't know. I don't know if the Mariners are going to pick that up. but Or else they're going to have to buy him out. Nothing too crazy there. Left fielders or outfielders? A lot of, a lot of some older players. Brett Gardner is a free agent. Andrew McCutcheon has a $15 million club option or a $3 million buyout. Jock Peterson is going to be a free agent. Rosar, Eddie Rosario is going to be a free agent. So is Kyle Schwarber. And Chris Taylor, who can also play the infield too. Yeah, Chris Taylor is going to be interesting. I think he might get a good deal somewhere. Now, hey, that's what I'm saying, Anthony. 
play, play the play the youngsters. Why why play the free agent market? There's a lot of players in house that that need that need the innings, that need the games. There's Jordan Adams, Shimmer, and a black ink autograph. Josh Winkowski using the wrong pen. Alfred with the Red Sox. What's going on here? Yeah, the signing of all Tops autograph cards. Yeah, this is an official autograph. Do all his cards look like this? No, I feel like I pulled this guy before and it wasn't a black ink autograph. I remember because I was like, I thought I was going to struggle with this name. You think he's, he signed one with black ink autograph and the Tops rep was like, hey, no, 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 no. You got to use blue ink. And he's just like, ah, but I already signed one like this. One of one, one of one, maybe, huh? And there's Wander Franco, Speckle, to two ninety nine. Burke Thomas with the Rays. And we got Carlos's brother. Speaking of free agents, Carlos Correa could walk. J.C. Correa's younger brother also a shortstop. So I guess Carlos Correa could walk, and then in a in a number of years, J.C. Correa could possibly take his spot. Gotcha. Alfred's looking on eBay, and they're a smattering of both black and blue signatures. All right, that's kind of funny. Bobby Witt Jr., that's a big name, to four ninety nine. Royals could be an interesting looking team in a in a year or two in a short amount of time. All right, next box, more free agents. No, no one's interested in any of these free agents. What about center fielders? Does that interest you? Jackie Bradley Jr., player option. Mm. Billy Hamilton as a speedster. What about Jake Marisnik? This is really not too many outfielders that are that are terribly exciting. What about right fielders? Charlie Blackman? I thought they'd trade Charlie Blackman in the in the midseason. I think they might have they should have. He has a twenty one million dollar player option. And another option uh, in twenty twenty three for ten million. I thought they'd trade him, get prospects. Um. Yeah, Nick Castellanos can could opt out of the remaining two years of his con of his thirty four million dollar contract. So he's not a free agent, but he can opt out. If he opts in, then he'll be with whatever team he's on right now. Um. Let's see. Anyone else? Any other names that kind of jump out? Yeah, Jock Peterson once again, outfielder. Someone just wants. I mean, an AL team really should pick up Jock Peterson. You know. And if you just needed power from the left-handed, from a, a left-handed uh, bat, Doc here, he's pretty clutch too. Put him in some good moments. I don't know if he wants that. I think he still feels like he could play every day, but that might not be the reality though. Starting pitchers. Chris Archer is a free agent. And he, for a moment, for a minute or two, I thought Chris Archer was going to be one of the better pitchers. If if Castellanos opts out, is he getting more than what's thirty four divided by two? Is he getting more than seventeen million dollars a year? I. Is he? Maybe he'd take less average annual value for longer years. Maybe that's what he wants. There's Luis Mieses. I'm not in, I'm not in the head of Nick Casano, so I have no idea. But Juan 
White Sox, that's going to go to Taylor, last spot mojo. And the Crone Zone, Jake Cronenworth. Get in the Crone Zone, 001 out of 299. Starting Chris Archer, Trevor Bauer, but I don't think he's going to play next year. Jeremy Pena, but he had opt-outs each year. Dylan Bundy could be an innings eater. Desclafani had a pretty solid season. He's a free agent. Gossman's a free agent. John Gray is a free agent. Zach Granke is a free agent. Rich Hill's a free agent. Kershaw's a free agent. I think the Dodgers are going to take care of Kershaw, though. A lot of teams that could use starting pitching. There's Angel Rondon for the Cardinals. Mark R. with that one. Paxson's a free agent. Robbie, oh, that's the big name. Robbie Ray's a free agent. Look at the season Robbie Ray's having. There's Jesus Lozardo, refractor to 499 for the A's. That's going to be for Joe. Next box. Max Scherz is a free agent as well. Any other names that jump out on that starting pitcher list? Noah Syndergaard's a free agent? That's interesting. I'll bet the Mets would re-sign him for like a year. Yep, yeah. Robbie Ray made himself a, a nice payday this year. He worked on his mechanics too. It wasn't just a fluke. I think he, he definitely made some changes to get to where he is now. He might stay with the Blue Jays, to be honest with you, but but yeah, he's, he's going to get paid. Verland is a free agent. Alex Wood's a free agent. So there's some free agents out there. But if you're, if they're, we were talking about this in a different break. Um, if you're a team like the Angels, right? You got to chase, you got to go after Robbie Ray. Put him at the top of that rotation. And Otani will be up there too, but I mean, he doesn't make as many starts. But Robbie Ray, if he can anchor the top of that ro rotation for the Angels, plus their hitting, they, they could make some noise. Cubs should go after Syndergaard. They need pitching for what though? For the playoffs? Playoffs? I mean, I think the Syndergaard market is basically, especially he didn't pitch this year. You know, considering he's still recovering from a major injury, you would think that Syndergaard just gets a one-year show-me deal with a team. You know, and he just tries to come back strong and then he tests free agency. And tries to get a longer deal after that. There's Alexander Ramirez to 199 for the Mets. Yeah, the Nick Castellanos market is interesting. I've I've just never been as high on Nick Castellanos, but he's having a pretty a pretty solid season. Third baseman, right fielder, hitting 309, 29 home runs. 86 RBIs, so pretty steady player, pretty solid player. You know, $17 million for 30 home runs a year? I don't know. There's Yon Derek uh, Penango for the Cubbies. That's for EA from the Cubs. Number 25 prospect by Baseball America. So if Castellanos opts out, he's walking away from 34 mil. You're only walking away if you can get like, you know, five years at 15. There's Bryce Harper making an MVP push. Burke, 
with the Phillies. Or you're taking the higher average annual value, right? Maybe he's going to try to get $20 million for three years. $20 million a year for three years. Or a longer contract for a little bit less money. So where, 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 do, where does he go? Third baseman, right fielder. I mean, Chad Dahl was talking about how they need a third baseman. I mean, Mariners could, could probably pop him in there on the left side of that infield. I mean, hell, the Yankees probably want to reconstruct that infield. So if they have Rizzo and Castellanos on the corners, I don't think they'd mind that. And put Carlos Correa or Corey Seager at shortstop. There's Luis Garcia to 99. Joel with the Nationals. Yeah, does he want money or does he want a ring? He could get both if he goes to the Yankees, I think. <laughs> I think that's that's the that's the scary thing about the Yankees is that I think they want to kind of reconstruct. Right, that third base shortstop area. I don't I don't think I don't think they're enamored with Miguel Andujar who's on the 60 die IL. I think they're over Torres, they're over Gio Urshela. You know, I think they want to put they want to put Rizzo at first, DJ LeMahieu at second, put Carlos Correa or Seager at short, and get someone at third base like a maybe a Nick Castellanos type player. He could still opt in and still get traded. There's Julio Carreras, Rockies, Drew with the Rocks. And we've got Po Yu Chen to 125. That'll be for the Pirates, Brian Croft with the Buckos. Although the big elephant in the room that we have not addressed in the offseason is the fact that the collective bargaining agreement is expires at the end of the season. So Major League Baseball, the owners and the Players Association have to start working on a new collective bargaining agreement. A lot of things on the table, and I, I, who knows what who knows what will happen there. Remember last season, there's Justin Martinez, Diamondbacks, Taylor, won that team in the filler. Remember last year during the you know in the in the height at the height of the pandemic when they were trying to figure out are we going to have a baseball season or not. They couldn't really get to an agreement on anything, which makes me nervous about what the negotiations are going to be like at the end of the season. There's Jose Abreu, blue, to 150. So, I don't know. I mean, are there rumors of a possible... I don't think anyone's really discussing it yet. <laughs> I don't think anyone wants to even think about it yet. Yeah, it, it feels like it feels like everyone's trying to like enjoy the season and the playoffs while while we have it. 
you know, we're, we're finally getting fans back and we'll have a playoff with fans and all that sort of stuff. I think people are just kicking the can down the road. It's like we don't want to talk about it until we absolutely have to, until the season's over. But then it'll, I think it'll be a big deal and we'll figure out where both sides stand. It's either going to be a strike or a, or a lockout. There could be a work stoppage of some kind because they really didn't get along last year in figuring things out. And there was a lot of, if you remember the tweets from last year about, from, from like high profile players on how Major League Baseball was treating, you know, so many disagreements about players and player safety and all that sort of stuff and about testing, how often, how not, how are we playing schedules, you know, how are we doing extra innings games, double headers, travel, you know, how much of it, it is incumbent upon the individual players to, to protect themselves, how much responsibility do the owners have to protect their players, blah, 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 blah. All that sort of stuff. Money, you know, money stuff, how do we get paid? Are we prorated? How much, you know? So many things. So I think a lot of stuff's gonna be on the table for that. No, yeah, Rex, I agree. You definitely don't want another 1994 type of strike. Absolutely. I mean, you don't want you don't want any situation where we lose games, lose you know regular season games. But there was a lot of battles last year that made me really nervous about about this year. I have no idea, actually. I was, I was just thinking that. I don't know how long. I think that's collectively bargained as well, how long the agreement is going to be. There's Yoaki Cespedes, speckled at 299. That looks pretty sharp, especially with the that those clean white uniforms there. And we got an orange auto. Oselvis Basabe, 15 out of 25. Love those orange parallels. Nice little jaspy orange. Going to TJ and the Rangers here in hobby number seven. There you go, Teach. Number 19 prospect for the Rangers. So the current CBA, according to the CBS article, is it set to expire December 1st. And official Major League Baseball cannot be played without a new agreement. This was a September 1 article from here. I'll drop the link to the article right here. Um, yeah, it was. I mean, I think Major League Baseball kind of let that let let some certain things slide so a Sosa McGuire situation could happen to bring fans back. So there's Heston Kirkstad purple chrome to 250. So during the there, so they apparently they met in August. Emily pro, proposed a revised service time arrangement. Right, that's the big deal with, with Chris Bryant. That's going to be a big deal. When do when does service time? When does that clock start? Can you prevent teams from manipulating the clock to have a situation that happened with Chris Bryant and the Cubs, and other players too, but not as high profile as Chris Bryant. Francisco Alvarez green shimmer to ninety nine for the Mets. That's for Aaron. And there's Jagger Haynes for the Padres, Ryan, with the Friars. This is crazy. So the article is saying, here's the rest here. I got William Contreras, Wilson's brother, to 50. Braves, Carlos. So they're propo MLB proposed a revised service time arrangement in which arbitration eligible players split a $1 billion pool and all players become free agents automatically at 29 and a half years old. What MLB proposed, according to Joel Sherman of the New York Post, MLB proposed was to create a $1 billion pool and to tie that pool to total to revenue in future years for all eligible players to replace, to replace arbitration. Oh, that's interesting. 
a formula would be created to determine how much players would receive. Arbitration eligible players receive roughly $650 million for this season. So they're increasing that pool. Wow. It's interesting. And free agency automatically hits at 29 and a half would allow all players to get at least one free agent shot in their 20s. Not surprised if you're thinking, boy, that sounds great for Major League Baseball owners, right? Well, the article continues. The MLBPA is likely to have several issues with the proposal. For starters, creating a $1 billion pool for arbitration eligible players is akin to a salary cap. It's a set pool of money that cannot be exceeded, and the union has remained steadfast against any sort of hard cap on player payroll over the decades. Also, setting free agency age at 29 and a half would help some players, like Aaron Judge, but hurt others. For example, Vlad Guerrero Jr., as young as he is, would remain under control with the Blue Jays for 10 years before hitting free agency rather than the usual six years, which is the handful of arbitration years. Star free agents in their mid-20s like Alex Rodriguez and Bryce Harper are best able to move the salary bar up. MLB's proposal would stifle that growth. The MLB PA could counter with free agency at 29 and a half or six years of service time in the current system, whichever comes first. Though, that would not combat service time manipulation for very young players like Vlad Guerrero Jr. These are all just proposals, by the way. Because last month it was reported MLB proposed a $100 million salary floor with a drastically lowered $180 million tax threshold is lowered too. So, a lot of interesting things. But that's going to be the scary thing in the offseason, that collective bargaining agreement. Eric, what's going on? Oh, man. Eric's like, I've been calling Brewers nonstop for the last two days. Now it's his turn and Cricket's. Well, we still have three more boxes to go. And there's Brewers right there. See, Je it's Jefferson Cuero. Eric, play to the whistle. Spoke too soon. Eric J, Brew Crew, Jefferson Cuero, the number 10 Brewers prospect. And then, uh, Keston Hira, 67 out of 499 refractor. Brewers, Eric. And there's Baron Radcliffe, Phillies. Burke Thomas won the Phillies in the team random. And there's Cool Whit Merrifield. Cool Whit to 250. Hey, sometimes it works, Eric. Sometimes it works. All right, you're welcome. Hey, there could be more. Eric, could be more. Got a few boxes to go here. So we'll see what happens with the CBA at the end of the year. Anthony was like, hey, I'm okay as long as we'll never have replacement refs in the NFL. Yeah, that was pretty bad. An umpire strike would be pretty bad. Imagine, I mean, people complain about Major League umpires already. Imagine if the umpires didn't reach an agreement and we had replacement umps. Oh, that'd be terrible. Those replacement refs in the NFL were pretty bad. Ooh. Alfred want, Al wants a Super Fractor autograph for the Red Sox. All right. I pulled a couple Super Fractors, but I have not seen uh, a Super Fractor autograph. I 
So we agreed before that, right, Tio, that Sosa Bonds and McGuire need to be forgiven let back in? I don't think they need to be forgiven. But I think they should probably be in the Hall of Fame. And then, and then have a section that says, hey, this was the era. There were steroids involved. But that was the era. Just like a dead ball era. Just like a live ball era. Just like the, the, the Greenies era. Just like... You know, they do need to make some changes with the umps, though, Anthony. I agree with that. There's Gabriel Rodriguez refractor to 499 for Cleveland, Chris Maxwell. Like, I feel like there there has to there was there's been a study where there's age uh like umpires that are over like sixty years old or something like that, or significantly worse over sixty. I don't know how old Joe West is. Joe West is sixty eight years old. Why is he still umpiring? Why is he still out there? You know? There's Christian Santana's speckle autograph for the Tigers, 155 out of 299. So I, I just think they got to get. They got to get. Uh, I think they, they, they got to they, they gotta figure that out. They got to get younger. That's not a that's not a like for like comparison, Rex. That's wrong. It's different. Hall of Fame different from uh, actual regular season games that were played properly under the collectively bargained agreement. Austin Martin atomic to one fifty. Dawn of Glory. Hall of Fame is different. It's an independent body of baseball writers that elect players into a museum. Nick Gonzalez, 250 Purple Shimmer. Come on, Rex. <laughs> you you, you got you to gotta come at me better than that. There's Brian Ramos. Taylor with the White Sox. Last spot in Mojo. And Josh Donaldson for the Twins to 299. That is for Pat Wolf. No, Joe Chris, I love it. Bowman Chrome, there's a lot of this helps me with my uh, fantasy baseball drafts. Because I see what players are good and what what how popular they are and how well they play cuz you know, if they're popular, they're probably good players, you know? So within a couple years, I'll be like, I'll be able to make sharp plays in fantasy baseball. That's why I love Bowman stuff. <laughs> See all these other, yeah, that was a nice atomic Austin Martin, Joe. Yeah, Joe had, sorry, and didn't call that name out. Joe Locus, Blue Jays, Austin Martin, still Blue Jays edition there. Sean Harnish, what's up? The umps get major bonus for making the playoffs. So a way to reward West financially each year. Consider part of their income. All of them get paid the same for the most part. Okay. But I don't know. Do we really want 68-year-old Joe West calling balls and strikes? Is, any, is anyone actually testing his... I mean, maybe that's age discrimination, but is anyone really testing his eyesight? There has been studies that says older umps just make worse... Listen, studies have shown... Dot, 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 studies have shown that umpires generally get calls right. It's like 90, it's like 95% of the time, 92%, I mean, they, they make, they get most of the calls right. But then there's different numbers on when you get the calls right in certain situations and situational calls right, that, that gets different. But there is, I think you can, there's some, I did some Google research, research on this a while ago, but I think there is a distinct difference where like over a certain age, over a certain age, like the percentage dips considerably. Like most umps will be around that 95% range of getting calls right. But then as you get older, you know, your hand-eye coordination kind of diminishes a little bit. It starts to drop to like 
88% or something like that, which sounds good, but not in professional baseball games. Especially if... Uh, especially if... Uh, Betting starts to become a thing. See, I don't know if I, I think they've considered like a digital strike zone, like a robot or something like that. Personally, I love the human element of it. But I just think we need to figure out how to make the umpires better first. I feel like electronic strike zone is a last resort. It's like if, if we've done all that we could to train umpires, to pay umpires better, to have them do regular whatever better. I don't know what the collective bargaining agreement is, but if there was like an umpire training camp the same way that, you know, are there umpire facilities that, that test their, you know, ability to call balls and strikes? You know, there's Gabriel Maciel for the Twins. That's for Pat Wolf. I don't know if they have that. I don't know if there's like, you know, training camps. For that, are we doing? Are we making sure we're developing the best umpires first before we go to a robot shot? I think they have HP. I think in the Atlantic League, this is usually where they do a lot of the fun, weird rule testing. Like the you can steal first from home. That was an idea. I think it's the Atlantic League. Some smaller independent league where they test like that sort of sort of stuff. That's where they tested the pitch clock. And that's where they tested the, the runner on second for extra inning games, I want to say. There's Alexander Viscaino, a great way for electronic travel using drones with a radar. I don't know if that would make sense, Rex. Drones are kind of moving. You, you would, I don't know how accurate they would be in flight. It'd be a lot of a uh, lot of minuscule, especially if you're talking about you have to be, you know, perfect. I think maybe like a stationary camera would be it. There's Tucker Bradley Blue. Yes, Joe. Remember that stealing first from home? They they talked about that for a little bit. I think they still might be testing it. There's Tucker Bradley's 26 out of 150. Royals. That's for Jonathan. This is Max Scherzer to 299. Choppers use radar time during car chase. Yeah, but that's a car chase, Rex. They're they're not measuring things to the to the centimeter in car in car chases. That's that's different. Car chases, they're just following. They're using radar just to follow cars. They're not trying to measure things. Oh, okay. Sean Hart said, yeah, all that's coming next year or this next year. You never had to go like an umpire camp. Now it's going to be like a license. Yeah, you got to get, you have to. Why not? I mean, there's too much money at stake for, I still want the human element. But there's still too much money at stake for, for for guys to not be trained as best as they possibly could be. Ball players go to swing camps and throwing camps and workout camps just to develop their skills. And umpires maybe not maybe they don't have the ability to hit the hit the ball, but they do have the hand the eye the eyesight to be able to call pitches, right? So why aren't they honing that? They should. They got they gotta have all that. All right, last box. Ed's not happy with this case. Last chance for for Ed and his Dodgers. He's got the Dodgers in this. I want to give him some Dodger Joe Mojo. Good luck, everybody. Last box of the last break of the night. We'll run the promo randomizer after this. We did unlock that, so thanks, everybody. Although not, not as many bounties as I hoped there would be. Which sport do you think is hardest to umpire? Good question, Anthony. NFL, NBA, or MLB? It's got to be baseball. Because, like, think about it. Let's say, let's say the pitcher is over there, right? And you're like, you're trying to figure out how to call balls and strikes. 
in this uh, in this tiny little area right here. Hollywood not happy either. No Royals hits. And <laughs> wrong. There was a Royals hit. Not not a lot, but there was one. Yeah. I feel like it's baseball. Just to be able to... There's Hedbert Perez, 33 out of 50 gold. Yeah, I feel, I feel like... Uh, I feel like baseball has to be one of the hardest. There's Milkar Perez, Seattle, Capolo. Although I guess football is hard, right, Joe? Yeah, Joe Christian is. I was. I'm gonna check myself on that. I'd say football. Too many things going on at once. Yeah, you've got a massive rule book in football, and then you've got to judge bang bang plays all at once. And it was like, was that pass interference in that split second? When's it a hold? I mean, you gotta be like. I mean, a lot of those guys are. Some of those guys are like lawyers. You gotta be like a lawyer to figure out how to how to interpret that rule book on the fly. There's Brendan Davis, the 4.99 refractor card. I don't know. I think they're all hard, right? I think refs don't get enough credit. <laughs> Sometimes it's all hard, right? Basketball too. Everything's moving so fast, and you got to you got to make decisions in split seconds. And in basketball, you're running around. You're running. You're you have to be athletic. You have to run around as much as a. You have to run around as much as a uh, as an NBA player. There's Jared Kelly. Fuchsia Shimmer to 199. Soccer is hard too. There's only one ref on a huge pitch. And you have to figure out how to call fouls in. You're running around all the time. All right. Last one is Ezekiel Tovar, Colorado Rockies. Is our last autograph. Drew with the Rocks. Hey, thanks everybody for getting in on the action. I know sad times for a lot of people in this break, but I appreciate everybody getting in on it, getting in on all of these breaks and helping make this happen. There's JJ Blade speckled at 299. That is for the fish, Joe Locus with that. Here's a quick recap. Here in hobby, pick your team seven. Again, thank you, everybody, for getting in. There's a Pablo Abreu. Oh, there were two Brewers autographs there, Eric. There was one earlier. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of solid stuff. Urbina here. That was the case hit. Bowman Ascensions insert. And we started off with that Trent DeVoe Atomic Refractor for the Halos. Thanks, everybody. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. I'll see you next time for the next break. Bye-bye.